Welcome back to a brand new chapter of Dragon Ball Super, chapter number 57. The main point of this chapter is about halfway through, Moro arrives on Earth, right in front of Gohan, Piccolo, and Android 17. At this point, Moro has spent the last few months going around the universe absorbing planets, getting younger, and getting more powerful. That's why his beard is gone, it means Moro is now in his youth and in his prime. And looking at what he does in this chapter, he is more powerful than ever. He grabs one of his henchmen by the head. It looks like he's about to crush it, but this is actually Moro being nice. He says, take him back to the healing chamber, I'll probably need him later on. The entire reason Moro came to Earth is because he wants to absorb it. Now, what's interesting is that every Every other time Moro has absorbed a planet, he has done so from above. He has rarely ever stepped foot on a planet and not just absorbed it from his spaceship, but the reason he went down now is because he wanted to make sure that Goku and Vegeta were on the planet, that way he would get the most energy possible. Unfortunately for him though, Goku and Vegeta are not there at the moment, it's just Gohan, Piccolo and Seventeen. Gohan and Piccolo are talking to each other just by sensing Moro's power, they are freaking out. Piccolo says, this dude is on another level, that's some horrifying chi. It's like you can feel the death of the countless amount of planets that he's destroyed and absorbed into his body. It's like you can feel it just coming out of him. This dude is like the Black Plague. Gohan screams out at Moro, and it's kind of something he would have said when he was about four. He goes on to say, just wait until my dad gets here, and Vegeta, they're strong enough to beat you. The thing about that is just straight away, Gohan's pretty much conceding. He's saying, you know, there's no chance I'm going to be able to beat you, but, you know, wait until my dad gets here. It is pretty on point with Gohan's character, but it just makes him so less cool. Goku is in space and is flying this spaceship. I've never seen this before in my life, Goku flying a spaceship. Something about it is just really amusing, but he can sense Gohan getting beaten down. And it's not even by Moro. Goku can feel Gohan getting beaten down by Moro's henchmen. Moro taps this guy on the back of the head and says, take this gift. And straight away, this guy bulks up and becomes a couple of hundred times more powerful than he already is. And now he's able to take on Gohan, Piccolo, and Seventeen all at once. That is the power that Moro has, and Goku can feel this, but it's just not enough to get him to instant transmission out of his spaceship directly to Earth. For some reason, Goku cannot pick up on any energy on Earth. He's trying really hard, and you're getting a bit of an insight into the inner mechanisms of instant transmission. All of a sudden though, Krillin jumps on top of a mountain and starts powering up, and that's when Goku can look onto a signal, and that's when he gets to Earth. That is where the latest chapter of Dragon Ball Super ends. This man Goku teleports right in front of Krillin and says, sorry I'm late, but I'm here now. So from here on, the story's probably going to go in the direction of Goku vs Moro in the next chapter, but what's interesting is that if Goku vs Moro begins, where's Vegeta? Every single time in Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta always went in first. He was the one to fight someone first and then get absolutely destroyed. This time, it's looking like it could be the other way around because Goku's already on Earth, Vegeta's still training. This could honestly be Vegeta's first win in a long time. Toyotaro could just be making up for the fact that Vegeta got his kill stolen in Resurrection F and now he could maybe do it tomorrow and because Vegeta beats Moro instead of Beerus beating Moro, Vegeta could get offered the role of God of Destruction. That could be a whole other story but for now let's just settle down and that is where the chapter ends. Let me know what you think. The Dragon Ball Super story is just trudging along very very slowly but it is getting there and it is going somewhere pretty interesting. I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next Dragon Ball video.